Welcome back to part two of this D&D session. Um, if you are just joining us on Twitch or you are coming from the space between when you watched the last YouTube video and this one, we'll do a quick recap of what happened in the first part of this session. Who wants to do the recap? Who, me? Just oh. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually here. I can do the recap. Great. Yeah, you can. Uh, are we ready for that right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we started today in the basement of the town hall in this lovely little town, uh, which was an old crypt. We had defeated a necromancer and were deciding what to do with him. Uh, Harbeck, our illustrious, drunken, dwarven monk leader, went running out to try to arrange a room at the inn where we could question the necromancer more closely when and if he ever woke up. When he ran into uh, this uh, mysterious group that has been in the town, um, we are pretty sure that they're good people, but only pretty sure. Um, they've been here looking for the same missing elder that we came looking for. Uh, upon seeing Harbeck, the, the leader of that group, who was also posing as the innkeeper in the town, uh, asked him how it went. Um, he told him a little bit about how we fought a bunch of undead things and have captured a necromancer, and she said, well, bring him up. Let's see what's going on. So we hauled him up, and they identified him as the other town elder, whose name we forgot, so we were calling him Rando Calrissian, uh, and said, but wait a second, he's not a necromancer. Oh, crap, get down! And then he exploded um, in a burst of necromantic energy, and we discovered that it was actually the corpse of the other town elder that had been possessed by some something. Perhaps an evil air elemental thingy, but we don't know that for sure. Um, then we found out that the innkeeper lady can read the, ver <coughs> the various languages like Infernal or Abyssal or whatever and Celestial that we came here looking for someone to translate. She read a little scroll and said, ooh, the ship that you were on that wrecked might be important and it has apparently been the shipwreck has washed up on this island you should go and investigate that um, and then we handed her some other documents to get her help translating and she stole them from us Said, uh, I'm just going to keep these and didn't tell us what they said and that made us upset uh, and then she said you should go check out that shipwreck but there's going to be a festival here in a couple days, so why don't you stick around for that before you go? And we said, okay. And now we are sleeping and doing various things for a couple days while we wait for the festival. The end. Basically, yeah. <laughs> That'll wrap everything up. Okay, so uh, during the couple of days before the festival, you achieve various goals. Uh, Rogar tries to convince tiny human that tiny gods are not as good as glorious dragon gods and that he knows very little about tiny gods uh, Din gets swindled by a shopkeep and pays an exorbitant amount for an apple uh, Tabron spends some and time and doesn't feel bad about it at all <laughs> no, hey you got the apple and you yeah. didn't want those shiny I wanted discs. the apple, which is what I wanted <laughs> Didn't need those things. We're good to go. The the trick's going to be to show her that those things can get her lots of apples if she doesn't give them all away at once. I mean, they really don't have any value. She's right. But she can get more of the stuff she wants if she's careful about how she uses them. And we'll, we'll get that point across. Eventually. <laughs> when somebody sees her handing over 50 gold pieces for an apple. Uh, Harvick spends most of his time drinking, but... And, and theorizing, but also uh, a little bit of time recovering to gain his hit points back. And Tavern, you spend some time with uh, Harbeck, 
Is there anything else that you wanted to do during that downtime? You're the only person who's sort of not fully accounted for. Um, there may be just a few minor uh, swindlings that I may do through the town. If you could earn about 50 gold. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as well as um, sending a letter out. 50 gold for that apple is totally going to screw up the economy in this little town. It is. It's really going to butcher it. <laughs> that merchant is now like, he can just buy the town hall in a minute. <laughs> but it's fine. He's, he Had a little <laughs> bit of a windfall. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a windfall. 50 gold pieces. Merchants see adventurers come in and they raise all their prices. And they put out the, yeah. the adventure signs. Mm -hmm. This apple will heal all wounds. <laughs> Just eat it and then sleep for six days. <laughs> it healed my hungries. <laughs> it did heal your hungries. It's very true. Okay, so a couple of days pass, uh, and it's the day of the festival. Um, the moon is new in the sky, and uh, and all of the townsfolk are gathering around the well in the center of town, around about number three on that map. Uh, she should be able to see now, I believe. Unless I'm bad at roll 20. I think I did it right. I did do it right. Okay, so, uh, all of the townsfolk start to gather in that area. There's uh, lanterns being put up and, and, you know, food and beverages and everybody seems to be quite merry. In fact, the whole funk of uh, weirdness that the townsfolk had about them seems to have dissipated uh, quite substantially. Was it the funk um, of 40,000 years? Mm, probably not. <laughs> it was the funk uh, of our economy was just in, not infused with 50 gold yet. Yeah. But everybody seems to be quite cheerful and, uh, and drinking and being merry. Uh, I assume that you're all attending the festival? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to be yeah. attending the festival in a, a small, distant, and lonely way. Hiding under a tree. Somewhere. How yeah, would Greg I'm, I'm more feel observing about, the festival, <laughs> uh, but the skies and being able to maybe let loose as a different persona. I'm not sure that changing my face will change the way I feel about crowds. Hmm. You never know. I'll just stay over here. Thank you for the offer, though. So, Briggs hiding under a tree. Everybody else, you're drinking and being merry and participating in the festivities? In that order. Drinking and being merry and then participating? Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the priority list. <laughs> uh, so, there's, there's party games being played, and I don't mean like Duck, Duck, Goose. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, they're, they're trying to throw, uh, you know, small rotten apples through a hole in a piece of wood to try and win beverages. It's a, it's a very, you know, sort of fun um, sort of fun evening. Uh, there's plenty of alcohol to be drunk. There's plenty of things to do. Um, are any of you seeking out particular forms of entertainment? I know Bree is hiding under a tree. What about the rest of you? Uh, whichever game seems like the most efficient way to keep my tankard full uh, I'll, I'll go participate in that if I need to throw an apple through a hole or you know put a ring on a sheep or something I'm, I'm there okay well there's actually something and you might feel a little bit guilty about this but there is a, a board breaking <laughs> test of strength uh, yeah. sort of competition going on amongst a bunch of woodcutters. They're trying to snap different thicknesses of boards. I don't feel bad about it at all. You don't feel bad about it at all? Nope. Uh, it also gives you an opportunity, if you wanted to, to test out one of these new drinks that you've sort of, you know, managed to brew up in your spare time. You're pretty confident, although it hasn't been tested and tried in, in, mm -hmm. as of yet, you're pretty confident that it should boost your ability to hit things very hard. Great. Um, how many doses do I have? I've only managed to sort of brew up the one at the moment from a few 
various herbs and things, but it's not a complicated brew. It's certainly yeah. something that you could potentially brew more of. I was just hoping to do a little bit of science and, like, have somebody fail and then have them try it. Because, like, if it... I'm, I'm just curious if it works on non-monks um, so that I could, like, maybe distribute to the party. But I, I would rather know that it works at all, so I'll take the one dose I have and break something very big. Okay. It's quite the potent alcoholic beverage, and you feel like... <sighs> you don't feel coordinated. You don't feel like you are paying a lot of attention. You are most certainly inebriated um, after imbibing this particular beverage. That was but, the goal. Uh, but you, you start snapping some boards, and the first few boards are things that are... You know, you, you, earning yourself money and drinks. And then they bring out a log. Full-sized log from one of the trees nearby. And they're like, bet you can't break this and start throwing down coppers. Oh, well. The log. You know, the risk of breaking the bones in my hand, you'll need to give me a bit more copper than that. But now I'm pretty persuasion. sure I could do it. Roll a persuasion check for me, please. Gather around, call your friends, let's get this board broken. Okay. You end up with about two gold worth of copper, and you're drawing quite the attention of the crowd. You're, right. um, there's a fair bit of showmanship going on at the moment, which is interesting. I'll, I'll try to um, do as much showmanship as I'm capable of as well. Um, you know, and, and... But you are slurring your words. You're not, like... For anybody else, the rest of you have probably noticed Lama or Harbeck doing what he's doing at the moment. He's very drunk, and you're not sure whether it's charisma or the potential chance of catastrophic failure that people are being drawn to, but he is, he's drawing quite the crowd. If anyone saw me fall through the banister in the inn yesterday, then you'd know that I'm very good at breaking things. Let's do this! Tabarin, does Tabarin, like, see that he needs more help gathering people for money? That's what uh, Tabarin is going to be doing, adding to the persuasion. <laughs> he seems to be doing quite well by himself, but you do manage to attract a few extra people over <laughs> to watch the spectacle. Uh, Lama, can you make an attack roll for me, please? Yeah! hi -ya! Yes! <laughs> wow! Wow. Uh, okay. Um, for mechanical purposes, so you're aware of what the beverage does, you can add an additional 1d10 points of damage. Points of kick punching damage. Ignore my phone if you can hear it, by the way, because I am. That was not very much. <laughs> but it was enough. Uh, you managed to put your fist straight through the log. Mortality clarified how, in a single strike. How, like, <clears throat> like, like a tunnel through the log? Because that would be awesome. I would wear it like a bracelet. Yes, that's <laughs> basically what happens. You literally force your hand through the log. So I'll make sure it's all the way up to my elbow so it doesn't slide down and get me splinters. <laughs> and I'll just pull my arm up with this log attached to it, and I'll wear it like a bracelet for the rest of the evening. It's quite heavy. I you will <laughs> not wear it quite like a bracelet for the rest of the evening. But you can carry it under an arm. But I will, I will <laughs> lift it up and cheer and then, you know, try and get out without splinters. And collect all of your money. And, and let Tabarin collect all my money because when he collects money, he somehow ends up with more than there was there. So, so he can go ahead. <laughs> Brig, can you roll me a perception check, please? Certainly. We all know how good I am at these. That Eleven. Was not terrible. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's probably not good enough. <clears throat> 
You feel a gentle tap on your shoulder. I turn in that direction. Standing before you is quite a portly but attractive young female gnome who winks at you, hands you something wrapped in cloth, and then runs off. Um, so my initial reaction when I see this young female gnome is to like scramble back a few steps. <laughs> and then she holds out my uh, her present or whatever, and I very uh, shyly and tentatively take it. What do you think that was about, Binks? Squeak, 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 squeak. Uh, and I will resume my seat, and then I will very, very carefully, as like I'm expecting it. it it's a trap. It's going to probably murder me, because that's how my life goes. I'm going to very carefully open this little thing. Yeah, very carefully open the little thing. Uh, are you talking to Harbeck? Yes. Oh, I didn't hear it. Harbeck. Yes. I don't understand. What's not to understand? I don't understand why they traded you the shiny round things to punch a tree. Well, uh, they. this is a thing. I don't understand why anybody wanted the tree punched and why anybody wants these shiny round things. You can't it's, even get half an apple for that. It's, wait, you... You can't get half an apple for that. Did you see how many? I'd have had to punch like three trees for an apple. No, you you could buy a dozen apples. A bushel of apples with, with this much coin. What, have you been buying apples recently? No. I bought apple one. Okay, and, and how many coins did you give for the apple? All of the coins that I had. Why did we give you any coins? Oh, <laughs> we should. You needed a bit more training. Trees. Look, here's here's the thing. You could give many fewer coins for one apple, and then you'd have coins left. I know you don't want them, but you could trade them for a lot more apples than you got. Or I could give him all of my coins that I don't want and punch a tree, and then have many apples. I, well, let's talk about punching the tree, because the way that works is, it was a test of skill. They wanted to know if I could punch the tree, I insisted I could, they disagreed with me. And then, if I succeed in breaking the tree, I'm right, and I get to keep the money. And if I'm wrong, so when you're then I, get, right. I have to give them some money. The, the notion is called betting. When two people disagree, and there's a way to find out who's right very definitively, you can put some money forward, they call it a wager, and then whoever's correct gets to keep all the money. It's a game that people play with, with money. It's, it's probably a bit of a strange game now that I try to enunciate how it works out loud and explain it to someone that doesn't understand. <laughs> Oh dear. All right, so um, Brieg is doing his thing. Uh, and the crowd seems to be... At first they were quite happy with your show of strength and were cheering and so forth. And now you can tell that they're a little bit annoyed that you managed to take all of their money. Um, we should have another wager then. I'm a, I'm a benevolent fellow. I don't want to break the town. So, oh, I wish I had another dose and we could have another wager where one of them wins. Um, but I don't. So, let me... Okay. So, in order to have a wager, you have to be right about something. Yes. And somebody else has to think 
You have to convince them that your right is wrong. What? And then take their money. Usually you wait for someone who disagrees first, but I guess you could do it that way. So, let, let's demonstrate. Everyone! Get in here! <laughs> I bet I can break the log again, this time with my head! <laughs> Get your coins in! But you uh, can't do that. Right. Persuasion check. <clears throat> from, uh... From you, please. Alright, so, Din, you know I can't do that. I claim I can't. Right. So you would say, here's three coins. I would put in my three coins. And whichever of us is correct gets to keep the six coins. And then you can use them to buy an apple. And yes, six of these little ones is enough for an apple. You could have but kept I a lot. I already know I'm correct, so why don't you just give me your three coins? Well, that takes the fun out of it. I've got to try first. And I don't know you're correct. So we need some evidence. We need some proof. And that's the fun part of the game. That's science. Is this for science? Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a better science. We test and we see who's right with some science. Is there water inside of the tree? Can, can I use the same log? The one with already got the hole in it. Is that all right? No, you'll get a fresh one, and a log cutter brings out a log, which is thicker and of a harder tree. I will uh, gloriously fail on purpose, and I'm going to try not to hurt myself too badly, but play it up and act like the lumbering, drunken, fat dwarf and fall backwards, sprawl out on the ground after I collide with the log. And hopefully I have enough dexterity left after all of these drinks to do that. But we're going to we fail on purpose it. and get the town people their money back so that they still like us. <laughs> because that is important to Harbeck, that people like him. Okay, can I get you... I won't... Uh, you can pull the punch, that's absolutely fine. Or the headbutt in this case. Can I get a performance check from you, please? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> they love me! <laughs> you achieve it so successfully, you manage to actually stop your head like a sliver of an inch away from the surface of the log and rebound with such gusto and force that you almost do a full backflip and land sprawled out on your stomach but break your fall with your monkish training. And after much jeering and cheering from the crowd and and you playing up your injury uh, you uh, you have clearly lost the bet and everyone seems to be in better spirits now so I'll dig all the coins out of my pocket while I'm laying on the ground and just throw them onto the pile and then grab my head and, and roll off to the side of the of the tree punching event <laughs> I still don't understand. So, then, I was wrong. I didn't break the log. So, they got the money. Wrong. Hmm? You knew you were wrong. Well, I was wrong on purpose. Because I wanted to give them the money back so that they wouldn't feel and bad. Well, these, these people don't have as much money as you and I do. Well, as I do, because you spent well, all yours on an apple. Then why didn't you just give them the money? <laughs> it's more fun this way. They feel like they've earned it, and they got a bit of entertainment on the side. I feel like you stole backwards from them. A, a bit. I did, I think. I don't think any of them would be upset about it, so I don't know that it was wrong, necessarily. <laughs> backwards, backwards stealing, stealing is best stealing. <laughs> People tend to like backwards stealing. They're pretty happy. Can we call I have it giving. Apple? What? I still don't have enough coins for another apple. Uh, here. I'll give her five copper pieces. That should do it. Don't go well, to the same shopkeeper. Five. He might ask for more. While you two are having Need this conversation, 50. um, Brieg very quietly <clears throat> and surreptitiously picks his way through the crowd up to you and says, there's something that just happened. I, I'd like to discuss it. Well, okay. I'm not in much of a condition to remember a discussion. Is that a benefit or a hindrance in this in, in this particular instance? I'm not sure. It's just that Binks isn't much help. 
Oh, well, I bet I can do a better job than Binks, but I may not remember tomorrow. <laughs> Hit me. Not literally. I've been hitting logs with... <laughs> there was... Punching. Same. Look at my bracelet. <laughs> That's... A... Tree. Um... So... I'm not sure that I really explained it, but... While we were in the crypt, I saw... I had... Visions of a sort. I, I, mean, I saw things. Do you need another hug? Um, Harvick loves a hug. Yeah, not right now. You smell too much like booze. Um, That's the good... The, okay. But You saw angels? Yes. I I think I saw visions of heaven, but in one of those visions I, I caught sight of a dagger. A, a dagger whose name I recognize... Who, a dagger that I recognized. I know its name. The, the dagger is called Nightmare. Now, I, I don't know much about it, but while I was sitting over there, a, a gnomish girl handed me something, and when I unwrapped it, it was the dagger, or rather, it was an illusion of the dagger. And now she's gone, and I don't know what it means. Aye. So... Do you think the dagger is what gave you the nightmare? Because its name's Nightmare. Maybe it's got some nightmarish related... The visions, the visions weren't a nightmare. I, I, I mean, they were, they were visions of, of I, I believe it was heaven. And it felt like home. The, uh, and the, a dagger named Nightmare is from heaven? I don't understand it either. Ah, it seems like Rape. a thing. That maybe Rogar could tell us. I don't know much about heaven. Yes, Ray, I really like you, and I don't want to have to kill you. But were you dead, and now you're back, animated? <laughs> nay, well, nay, he was yes. only mostly dead. But he said he was in heaven, and it felt like home, and no. I might have to kill you. No, Din, I saw heaven. It was like, like something opened a window. And I looked in, and it was heaven on the other side. But you're not dead? Not at the moment, no. So you're not undead? Um, well, I don't think so. Okay. I feel like that's something I would know. Would I know? You would know, because then I would have to kill you. Well, I, I don't think you have to kill me. Okay. I'm glad that we've <laughs> that we've solved that. That could have been a bit interesting. Awkward. Perhaps we should find Rogar and, I, and Tabarin. He's like, likely to know a bit more about heaven than I do, <clears throat> but I can't I can't figure out why a gnome would hand you an illusion unless the whole thing. What What do they want you to do? I mean, it, it, you knew it was an illusion right away. Is that how did you discover? it? Well, you you know that I'm a bit skittish. Sure. So when she tapped my shoulder, it, it frightened me a bit. And when I unwrapped what she handed me, I was, I was still a bit frightened. But there was something about the dagger that felt like it, like perhaps it belonged to me. Um, and when I, when I looked a bit closer, that was when I noticed that it, it was in fact an illusion and the and it was dispelled so random women distributing blades do you remember the way the innkeeper looked at me i do i think i'm starting to wonder if perhaps i might be some more sort attractive of than you actually are well, I, I know I'm attractive. <laughs> yeah. I'm attracted. I want a hug. <laughs> oh, 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 all right. Um, maybe yeah. just a just a little one. There I don't it find is. You attractive at all. Harbeck is not capable of little hugs, so <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Breed continues trying to hold. Have keeps 
continues trying to explain himself while totally enveloped in 300 pounds of dwarf. <laughs> and it comes out sounding like this. <laughs> Harbeck, let's go. <laughs> um, I, I think I might be... Is it possible that I've... I'm some sort of reincarnated something? Well, I think, it's, I think it's clear that there's more to you than any of us know. And that even perhaps you know. Because the innkeeper seems to know who you are. And you've never met her before. The random people distributing daggers that you recognize as your own. And their illusion. The thing that I don't understand is what reaction did she want from you? I if I had you... She disappeared the... before I even got to look at it. So, I, I don't know if we want to figure out what she wanted and do it, or figure out what she wanted so that we can avoid doing it. But I think one of those is necessary. Before I, came, before I came over here, I looked for her. She's nowhere to be found. Neither is the innkeeper, actually. What does reincarnated mean? It's... Um, so... But some people believe that when you die, your spirit goes on living. It goes perhaps to heaven. And then later, um, when a new person, child is born, that same spirit may be incorporated into that child. So you're reborn. And I think that, that perhaps in my previous life, I was much more than just a gnome. Or, perhaps at another stage in this life. I don't know that we can be sure. So you were dead. A dragon! <laughs> uh, no, then. Well, <laughs> yes, but don't I don't feel like we should get into that now. I, I died just a few days ago, don't you remember? Yeah, and I still haven't killed you for that. <laughs> Din, um, there's... There's a difference between resurrection and, and reanimation. And reincarnation. It, it's all a bit complicated. Perhaps we can talk about it later. Okay. Now that uh, now that Briggs brought it to your attention, as you sort of glance around the clearing, you don't see the stable boy, or the innkeep, or the brewmaster, or either of the other two fellows that were in the town hall with those three. They, um, they told us they were throwing this party, right? Yeah. And they invited us to be at it? Yeah. Which is why it now occurs to you that it's a bit odd that you haven't seen them at this party. Brig, it makes the most sense for you not to be at the party. Perhaps you should wander about town a bit as if you got sick of the crowd and you needed some space and see if you can locate our friends who said, who invited us Maybe they have something to do with giving you the dagger. Maybe that was the reason they wanted us here. Right. If I find anything, I'll. Uh, you'll you'll see a, a glowing stone float up from wherever I am. We'll keep an eye out. Uh, and can I get perception checks from everybody except for Tavern, please? Perception. I'm so good at that whole perceiving thing. Okay. Uh, while you are having this conversation, <laughs> while you are having this conversation, uh, Roga, you were the only person who noticed. Tabern has actually wandered off on his own. Um, and with the result you got, you probably didn't notice until after he sort of sneaked away or, or, or left. You don't know if he snuck, but you do know that he's no longer here and you sort of realize it during, realize it during the, the conversation that the tavern actually isn't there. Um, also, so yeah, so, so what's happening, so Brieg is going to be wandering off into the town and tavern has wandered off on his own. I'm first going to head back to the inn and kind of check on our rooms and see if perhaps they wanted to get us away from our belongings for some reason. 
Oh, always so suspicious, dude. Always so suspicious. All right, so you head I've back had, to Beacon. Breek has had a, a rough life. He has lots of reason to be <clears throat> suspicious and nervous of things. Okay. Well, you head back to the inn and search it from top to bottom. There's nobody there. Uh, none of your belongings seem to have been disturbed, but uh, after sort of wandering around and checking all of the various rooms, you notice that Tabarin is sitting down nursing a mug of ale, apparently quite deep in thought. You're right. Just Tabarin. Are you all right? Thing, things don't make sense. I'm trying to figure their, trying to figure things out. Well, uh, Brig clambers up on a stool next to him. Says, you're, you're right about that. Nothing makes sense. I don't know how I feel about going back out to the shipwreck. Have you ever heard of a dagger called Nightmare? No. I didn't know weapons had names. Only the special ones. Have you seen our hosts? No, I think it's just me. Are they not at the party? No, I'm looking for them. They seem to be conspicuously missing. I don't know about the shipwreck either. Whatever it was that happened on that boat, it wasn't good. I don't know how I feel about the uh, innkeeper. She's a confusing one. Do you remember how she looked at me? Yeah, she... There's something more to you that we've got to figure out. I'm not sure I want to figure it out. Having known you for the last few months, I'm not sure I do either. <laughs> but. Well, if you need anything, do you, can you cast light? I. You, you have some magical abilities, right? Yeah. If you've. If anything happens and you need our attention, just shoot a light off into the sky. We'll come running. All right. Works for me. For um, for referential sake, so that people who may have joined the D&D campaign before the first sort of couple of sessions, uh, Tabrin is the only person who has seen Brieg's third alter ego um, actually represent itself, and Brieg's third alter ego is quite unpleasant and, he's not a nice dude <laughs> and, and was responsible for the instantaneous death of a bone naga so um, yeah, Tabrin's a little skittish <laughs> around, <laughs> around Breed, Breed is a bit of an enigma um, and, I, and it's sort of important for people to know that okay uh, and I'll continue where else are look? Uh, so, I know, I know we've got like the the town hall kind of thing up at the top of the map, one, and the the brew shop is across the way at six across the way from the inn. Is it yes. six? That's the brew shop. Yep. Uh, well, I know the brewmaster was also part of this, so maybe I'll go look there and you know kind of look for signs there um, that maybe they've packed up and left altogether, or see if they're there. I will do that. Sneakily. Okay, like roll with, a like with stealthy, one of these stealthiness check with a twenty. Uh, you continue to sneak around, um, and uh, after sneaking for a little bit, you sort of poke your head inside quietly and look around. There's nobody inside. All of the belongings and things that you had seen in that particular room are still there. There's no indication that anyone's left or packed up and left. Okay, um, so what other, are, are the other 
like buildings and storefronts and things, are they open for business during this thing, or is everybody at the party? Everybody's at the party. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of like wander through town and, and glance in windows and look and stuff and see if I see anything, but I don't have any any particular pattern that I want to follow from here. Except okay. I'm... <laughs> so I, I kind of suspect that they are hidden in the town hall area, uh, maybe back down in the basement, whatever. So I'm kind of avoiding that because I don't really want to find them. So I go everywhere else first. <laughs> Everywhere except the town hall and then the town hall. Right. Okay. <laughs> While you're down near the butcher, uh, which is number 12 on your map, you're going to roll me a perception check, please. A perception check? I really mm -hmm. should, like, train in that or something at some point. <laughs> hey, that wasn't terrible. 16's actually not that bad. You hear a whistle. It's supposed to sound like a bird whistle, but it's not. It's somebody imitating a bird call. It's also nighttime, uh, and there's a new moon. So, something just whistled. Well, I've got this one. I've got this one. Yes. That's my bird whistle. <laughs> Sound Sorry. effects. I never get to Fancy. use it for real reasons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, sure. uh, wh did it come from like out in the woods, kind of south of town, from where we're where our map is? What direction did that whistle come from? It's very hard to tell. Uh, but as you sort of glance around, looking for the source of the whistle, it's there's not many places it could be or could have come from, except from like the south down towards the forest. Okay. Well, I am going to. Uh, Sneak extra carefully. I'm gonna gonna refocus on being sneaky, and then go try to see if I can find the source of the whistle. Okay. Apparently, you're gonna, gonna be, be exactly the ex sneaky. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be the exact same amount of sneaky. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you wander into the forest, uh, very sneakily, starting to get a little little distance away from town, but not too far away from town. You hear another bird whistle. Further to the south. Towards the southeast, in fact. Okay, I'm going to um, kind of sneak back to the road and uh, use cast light on a pebble and mage hand it up in the air. And hey, then, I was watching for that. And then wait for a, for a little while. Okay, how attentively was the drunk dwarf watching for that is more important. That is uh, more important. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's it's Brieg and he's got a soft spot in my heart. That's very, very true. Look, all of you do notice the pebble flying up into the air. That includes you, Tabern, who have... Uh, this is happening at about the same time that you're doing what you're doing. At which point I, I turn back to look down that direction, down the main street. Mm-hmm. And you would have to be looking for it. Like, it's a, it's a very subtle light, uh, especially against a, a starlit sky, but you do, you do all see the, the flaky I mean, lit just pebble. just had the conversation with him um, that if there was a need to have someone, I'm going to run that direction. Thinking back to the last message we had in our head in the town hall was to protect the little one. Okay. Uh, so the rest of you who are at the uh, at the party as well notice Tabern skirting around the outsides of the party, running down towards the south side of the uh, of the town. I am going to act like I'm about to be violently ill so that it is perfectly normal for me to run out of the middle of the crowd. And then I'm going to run out of the middle of the crowd. Okay. What are Roga and Din doing? 
Did well, I, I notice don't anything a... was happening? <laughs> I don't have a particular excuse. Um, actually, I well, don't even know if I was privy to the conversation about the light, but so so Din on was privy to that conversation, leave. right? And that meant I forgot what that meant. But it so was important. It was that yeah. he wanted our help. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, great. That was our signal to and go to him? where he is. No, but I don't know where he is. went. Oh, I just go to where the you go to where you saw the stone. Was. Yep. Okay, great. Or you just follow the big round dwarf. Okay, great. I'm following her. Rogar, you weren't privy to the conversation, but you have seen all of your party actively trundle off towards the south end of town. I think I shall follow them. Sounds like a good idea. Okay. After a few brief moments, uh, Bree, it's not a huge town. It's, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I assume it doesn't take long. No, it's only, uh, you know, 30 seconds or so. The rest of your party comes running down. A very drunk huffy puffy dwarf who probably wasn't prepared for running uh, <laughs> as well as Tabrin, Rogar and Din they all managed to make it there all around about the same time I'm, I'm sorry if I startled you but I think I found something that needs our attention what attention I've got left I'll give it so you know, I was I was out here looking around, and when I got down to the south end of town, so I'm like whispering this quietly enough that nobody outside of you know 15 feet or whatever our, our little conversation, hopefully no one will hear us. Um, say I, when I got down here, I I heard someone signal. They were trying to be sneaky about it. It was a bird whistle, but I'm sure it was someone. When I went off to investigate, the further I got from town. The further the signal moved, like, like maybe it was trying to lure me off, or it was warning someone that I was coming. Either way, I thought proceeding by myself might be a bad idea. You're being very bird. quiet. Should I be quiet too? I'm Am I being sure quiet enough right now? I'm not sure you're capable of that right now, but it might be a good idea if you can. Is this very quiet? I'll just not say anything, I think. Does anybody have... Uh, I'm just trying to think. Does anybody have... Perception... Like, trained? I do. Nope. Yes? Okay, if you have perception trained, I'm going to allow you to roll a perception check here. I'm proficient in it. Is that a thing? Yep. Yes, yes. that's what he means. <clears throat> But I'm not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you're not, unfortunately, unfortunately, not going to hear this. Okay. There are five of you, right? Yes. And you are all there. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, Rogar, Din, uh, Brig, and Harbuck. One, two, three, four. Those four there. Okay, so in the order that I called you out there, Rogar will a. <laughs> Rogar will a 22 hit your armor class? Ew. I'm guessing it will. Uh, yeah, that should hit me. Okay, Pretty 24 sure. hits Din. Uh, yes. Okay. 20 hits Brig and 22 hits Harvick. Sure yes. enough. Yeah, okay, good. So, uh, Unless my hits. drunken state has added to my AC significantly. <laughs> no. I should have bought more armor instead of an apple. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Rogar, 10 points of damage. Din, 4 points of damage. Uh, Brig, you were next, weren't you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 8 points of damage. And Harbick, 8 points of damage. I okay. don't get hit? No, you don't. Well, what do I see? One, one of the attack rolls missed, but all of you realize what's happened as 
six long feathered arrows fall from the sky and several of them hit you. Uh, I probably didn't see it in time to deflect it, did I? No, no, you were completely unaware of it. Sad. Um, you would have had the opportunity to potentially do better if somebody had heard the twang of the bowstrings. Yeah. But yeah, six, six long feathered arrows just fell from the sky. And uh, Do these long feathered arrows look elven? Is, is, uh, that yes. a, is that a reasonable guess? Yes, they do look very elven. In fact, they look very, very familiar. Uh, Brieg... Like, as in you just weed a little. <laughs> Brieg, as, as soon as he, he gets a good look at the arrows, just gives up all pretense of maintaining control of his mental state and just screams, Don't let them get me! And sprints north into the town. Cool. Uh, Harbeck wants to punch them him. and be next to the gnome so he can protect. That is. Uh, oh. I'm just chasing the gnome. I will also wheel to follow Brig. What about Tabrin and Rogar? Well, I was thinking that uh, I might try and slow people down, but I'm afraid I will never catch up if I don't go with everybody now. <laughs> this is probably very true. So, yeah. I will I will follow. I think getting back to town is definitely high so on the agenda. As I'm running, as soon as I find a, a likely like bush or porch or something, I like just dive in and curl up into a little fetal position, trying to hide, whispering to myself, "Please don't let them take me. Please don't let me take me. Please just don't let them take me." I'm gonna run after them as well. In the process, casting a spell upon myself, armor of Agathis. Okay. Water dances forth from your water skin, covering your body, freezing into images of the surrounding battle. You gain 15 hit points. Wow, that's really nice. That's a pretty cool spell. Yes. I... That's a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of potential damage if he gets hit by a lot of melee attacks. Um... Okay, so all of you have run north except for Tabrin, right? Well, Tabrin's moving too. He's just moving a little more slowly Slower. so he can cast his spell. Right? Okay. Right. Uh, and probably around about building number seven, you find a porch that you can appropriately dive under. So all of you, as you're chasing down the gnome who is running quite rapidly see him dive under the porch at number seven privet drive i will take up a defensive position around the porch at number seven i will check under the porch to make sure there aren't any angry badgers <laughs> that would be a bad hiding place just a terrified gnome and a uh, nervous ferret okay and I will look for more arrows falling from bird noises. <laughs> so the arrows we think came from southeast? Is that the rough? Yeah, south southeast. Okay, so if we're on the road side of seven, we have like, they'll have to come around the building from the north or up the road from the south and they won't be able to arrow into us from their previous location. Right. Yes. Okay, so um, I will wave to keep eyes around the north side of the building and I will look south to the road to hopefully see them approach if they're chasing us. I'll go keep an eye on the north side. Okay. So you so stand there. So they're over here, down here, we think, is where they were. In the trees. Uh, they're nope, to the here. south in some yeah they're to the south, south in some direction east right over here yeah oh gotcha over in that direction somewhere but 
it would be quite easy for them to reposition. Yeah. So in my mind, we were having that conversation like on the road, kind of here-ish. Yep. And then we ran. And then you ran. And ran and, and ran Arbex and ran. here somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. here somewhere. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okey-doke. So after a few moments of relative silence, you start to hear more bird whistles uh, coming Uh-oh. from the south and the west. That's you, useless. And the east. You, you uh, <laughs> I felt really awkward after I did it the first time. No, <laughs> chat was really impressed. They want to hear it again, again, and we've got a perfect excuse. <laughs> if I can do it with uh, suppressing laughter. Ah. Now you're on the spot. Right? <laughs> and you realize that the whistles are coming from all around you. In the all directions. I can't do that. Oh, Is the crowd <laughs> still crowded around the town square? Like, they're just still having festivities? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I so suggest we go either to get out of here or we go barricade ourselves not anywhere in the open it seems that the options are we, we need to think about the crowd here that's a large attack Why? are they here to, to slaughter the town folk in which case should we protect them or are they here for us in which case we should go in away which case from we the should festival get our horses. they're here for me and that will be so... the perfect cliffhanger for this, <laughs> for this hour, I think. That's perfect. <laughs> They're here for me. All right, let's take a quick five-minute break uh, for YouTube purposes and for refilling of drinks and so forth. And then when we come back, we will find out what happens as <laughs> the elves circle and close and if, around. And if Briggs' sudden egomania is... Accurate. <laughs> Everything is about me. Clearly. It's about me. It's about me. <laughs> well, you recognize uh, the arrows. That's a pretty decent indication. <laughs> all right. I'm off to get water. Uh, I'm doing the same. I'll see you all very, very